song chokes me up you know he's worthy I'm a songwriter and um, that was one of the first songs that I'd written back in 2009 or 10 somewhere around in there and uh, the song was born out of a, <coughs> excuse me, a seeking God uh, for healing uh, from depression. And uh, I, this morning I want to give you a little bit of my story and, and my testimony. And it's my hope and my prayer that you will find something within that that you can identify with. And it's also my hope and prayer that God, God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and all that is in them would touch you and open your heart to receive the words and go past your reasoning and past your mind and reach your heart. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your son Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross that allows us to even approach you and talk to you, Father God. Because you are holy. Thank you for Jesus' sacrifice that covers us, covers our sin, and redeems us, and places us in right standing with you. Not any work of our own, or by our strength, but by what you have done, what you have ordained to do. We receive that gift, Lord, by faith. Father, we just ask you to Prepare the way for your word. 
to open our hearts, open my heart to receive. Open all of our hearts to receive. And Lord, I ask you to make me a conduit of your love, a conduit of your words. And we trust you, sweet Holy Spirit, to be here and to minister us to us, to our needs. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, my story is one of this. <clears throat> For about 20 years, I suffered from a, a, a diagnosis of a bipolar disorder, which if you don't know what that is, it basically just means depression. And on the other end of the spectrum, what they call mania or... Uh, getting real excited and a lot of energy, not being able to sleep for days at, at times. And um, so most of my life suffered with this. And depression, uh, dark times of depression, uh, you can't get out of bed and you can't really function. And uh, you just you, your mind is heavy. You, it's a weight on you. A dark cloud is on you. So I'm thinking... Uh, you know, in about 2009, 2010, when I started to write songs, that's when God first started to reach out to me. He was probably reaching out my whole life, but that's when I noticed. <laughs> he was started reaching out. And I know, and is the amazing thing is, I was in a place of brokenness. We sang the song about God break us. Well, that's, that's what we need for God to break us. And sometimes God allows things in our life He didn't mind to draw me to Him and to make me do this and not make me more independent, but make me more de dependent. So God had allowed these things on me so I would call to Him. And finally it got to the point where He broke me and I called out to Him, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And He started to open my eyes to my condition, which wasn't depression. It was I was blind, poor, wretched, Bible calls a sinner, selfish, self-focused, full of myself, arrogant, unforgiving, bitter. And when God started to show me those things, or I looked at Jesus and said, I have no power to, to correct this. At least that's how I feel. I, I can't correct this. I thought this is just part of my humanity. And you know, I, even though I had a diagnosis, and you may be here and not have a diagnosis, but I promise you, you sit with someone in the psychology field long enough, you will. <laughs> and that's not an anti-psychology statement. It's just all of us in this room, it's, you know, I said it earlier that all of us in this room have a diagnosis, and it's called the human condition. Amen. Sin. We were born into it. In fact, the Bible says that, that our carnal, it calls our carnal nature, our sinful nature, our flesh nature, is not subject to the law of God. It can't even be. It indeed cannot be. But the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. And that happens when you're born again, when God makes you new, when you're born again, when He makes you new from the inside. So I understand, started to understand my condition. Now, I'm not anti-psychology or anti-medication. I'm just telling you my story. This is how it happened to me. I don't recommend, if you're on medication, unmedicating. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm telling you is my story. So what I did at that point is I got rid of all my medication. Now, it was very dangerous, and, and I don't recommend that. It was kind of foolish for me to do it that way. And I look back now at some of the, some of the things that should have happened to me by cold turkey unmedicating from some of the stuff that I was on. It should have killed me. I mean, it should have really put me away. But, it, but God, in His mercy, had mercy on my ignorance like He still does mm -hmm. in our humanity. So, at that point, I started to follow the Word of God, became born again, uh, and uh, started to become a follower of Christ. And then I started to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. And this is very, 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 very important. Because as a believer, as a Christian, if, there, if you're here and you're a Christian, the Bible says in Romans 12, 2, I believe, be not conformed to this world, and that's the world's way of thinking, the ideologies of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I've seen that and I thought, well, I've already been born again. 
I mean, I've already been changed in my heart. I've been changed from the inside. But there's a process the Bible talks about. Is it's growing in Christ and learning to become more obedient to the principles of the Word and God's, God's truths. But how can we do that without knowing what it says? Because if, we don't, if we're a Christian and don't read the Bible, then we create God in our own image. That's what we do according to our experiences. So I started reading the Bible and I read that scripture and it, I was just amazed by that scripture. And it also says in Romans ten seventeen that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we believe that the word of God, this Bible, we believe it to be the infallible word of God. And it has the power to change us. It is the only book in the world where the author is present when you read it. Think about it. It's not original. <laughs> I can't remember where I heard that, but it's the truth. And so I thought, okay, well, I've got a mind problem, obviously. There's some stuff going on in my brain. So I started to say, okay, Lord, you know, I, I want to renew my mind to your word. So, and it goes on to say that so that I can prove what is that good and perfect accept, acceptable will of God. So I said, you know, I'd get up in the morning. I'd say, Lord, you know, okay, okay, I want to give today to you. Now, what, what can I do? I mean, I don't, what can I do to keep from feeling a manic? Or what can I do? I don't want to get depressed today. And, and I don't want to get all down. And, you know, what I do? And, and you know, and I just, and, and, and finally, uh, I'm praying and God says, shh, 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 Tony. If you want me to heal your brain, your mind, uh, how about giving it to me? Letting me have it. How many times in life do we wrangle things and worry about things and with the same end result? Yeah. How many of you got in here have fears? That there's some kind of fear that goes on or some worry and you think about it and you wrangle it and it never changes. Never. Is what we need to do is to say, Lord, by faith and lift your hands to thought through our Father. It's a, it's a sign of submission. Like, I surrender. You ever seen that? You're surrendering. Lord, by faith, I give you whatever it is. This worry, this fear. Because, Lord, I've wrangled it and tried to win over it. And I can't. And it's always there. So, by faith, I'm giving it to you. Now, this is what I started to do with the depression. Lord, I just give this to you by faith. You know? I'm, I'm letting you have it. And at first it was a hundred times a day. Lord, I just give this to you again. I'm starting to worry about it and be anxious. You know? And then I continued to read my Bible and started to read scriptures like, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving ahead of time. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. This is a promise of God here. A peace of God which passes all understanding all your understanding will guard your heart and your mind. And it will. I'm telling you, this is God's promise. And it's the truth. And this is very effective. Lord, I just give it to you by faith. I just give it to you, Lord. I give it to you. I give that fear to you. I give that worry to you. Lord, I'm feeling depressed. But I'm not going to be sitting here obsessing and thinking about myself how depressed I am. Because when I'm depressed, I'm just thinking about me. I'm thinking about me. I'm not thinking about anybody else. I'm thinking about me. But I give it to you, Lord. I give it to you. Help me out of this habit, Lord. This brain of mine. Help me out of this habit of starting to obsess on this. Starting to obsess on my identity. What name or what title or what diagnosis has been given to me that is not who I am. It is not. The world will call us, will give names and titles to everything. You know, you're bipolar, you have mental illness, you have a trans brain, whatever. <laughs> you know? Your identity as a believer in Christ Jesus is what God says about who you are. And this is where the healing is. It's here. And it's a process. Some things God heals in us, boom, 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 real fast. Other times, he says, no, I have a plan and a purpose. And the word says this. Here's a promise. This is the promise of God. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. That's the grace or the faith. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Trust him. He's working in you. Trust him. It's by grace you're saved through faith, and that not of yourself is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And then another place it says, and here's another promise, that for whom, whom he foreknew, which is us believers, he also predestined. You are pre- see, if, if you're a believer, you're predestined for this, to be conformed to the image of his son who suffered, we read it this morning, who suffered greatly. And learn obedience through suffering. Now here's what I found out about the depression. My, my case. Unforgiveness. I know there's somebody here struggling with that. Unforgiveness. I had harnessed what my mom did when I was young. What my mom or dad didn't do. What I needed when I was young. What a narcissistic brother may have done. What a sibling may have done. What the people at school may have done to me. It's all their fault. This is why I'm like this. No, 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 no. I started to see all that and all this unforgiveness that I'd harbored and up in my heart. And justifiably so in my mind. Well, look at this abuse that I suffered. I understand that. I do. However... God wanted to conform me to the image of His Son, Jesus. And by suffering, you learn obedience. Because as what I learned, the more unforgiveness that I had, is the more I suffered. And I would hold people in my heart, kept kept in, in my personal jail and prison, from years back that they had no idea that I was even offended at them. Offenses are dangerous. Now, I'm not saying that this is the case in all cases of depression. But I am saying this was the case in mine. And I found once I let go of that bitterness and said, Jesus, have son, son of David, have mercy on me. Who am I? How many people have I offended? Hmm. And then God started a process of forgiveness. And I'm telling you, once that started to clean up, and I let God forgive through me by His power, I'm just a conduit. So, no matter how how many times this unforgiveness, I would wrangle it trying to get it to forgive and mold it into the shape of Christ and I'm going to be better at this and I'm going to wrangle this I'm going to get this unforgiveness handled and it always ended up right like that I couldn't do it my own strength but God by the power of his spirit does it through us we just need to get out of the way now here's what's going to fight us it's what fights us is our mind because that's, that's the human condition. The fallen condition of humanity is our mind. It is not who we are. I mean, this could be a whole different thing, but we're spirit, body, and spirit, soul, and body. The essence of who we are, the person that's been regenerated in the spirit. Proverbs, I think it says, Proverbs, the spirit of the man is in, his, is in the belly of a man, so to speak. And this mind... This flesh is carnal. There's nothing redeemable in this. It, the Bible calls it carnal. And so the process is to renew the mind to the Word of God to get this junk to line up. And your mind can be fleshly. To teach myself, listen, the more I hold on to this unforgiveness, the more miserable that I am going to be. And man, how arrogant of me to think that I'd never offended anybody. It's incredibly arrogant. <laughs> And I think, am I the only one here? No. Come on. No. We can be honest. I mean, we're all, I, I know I'm not the only one here. No. So God, in, who is rich in mercy, while I was dead in my trespasses and sins, as Ephesians says, the book of Ephesians, He made me alive together with Christ. Now here, 
There's two big revelations that I had on my path to freedom. Two. The first one's this. Matthew 16.25 He who seeks to save his life to try to get it organized and get it all in order and all you do. He who seeks to save his life and wrangle all that and get it right will lose it. You know why? Because you're distracted on yourself. On myself. I was distracted on myself. But he who loses his life for my sake, and Jesus is talking here for the kingdom, will find it. My life was not in me trying to get better or overcome bipolar disorder. My life was this. This is, get this, Galatians, the book of Galatians. Where is it at? Uh, I think it's in chapter 2. Yeah. It is no longer I who live. I have been crucified with Christ. Get this picture. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Is Tony mentally ill? Tony is dead. Get this revelation. This is your freedom. I understand the struggles against our flesh and our mind. I get that. But if you get this revelation that it is God's will <laughs> to, to conform you to the image of Jesus, to resurrect, to kill you off. <laughs> I know this is hard language to understand. To kill you off, so to speak, and to raise Jesus in you, which is full of love. Which is full of love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control, self-control. To raise Jesus up in you as a believer. That's what he wants to do. We're all the same. We got different areas of struggles. You might not struggle with depression. You might struggle with greed. You may. You, I mean, you may say, well, I'm going to store up for myself all these goods and make sure my retirement is care of. Then I'm going to get involved in ministry and start giving. What if you die tomorrow? Don't miss the opportunity in front of us. So that's two big revelations that I had. To lose my life for His sake and I've been crucified with Christ. And as I've, as I've continued my journey and still continue to read the Word, still continue to read it, that I was dead to myself and alive to Christ. Why? Why do I want to be this? And you see my hand doing this because is what I want to be is to get me out of the way and be a conduit for the love of God to flow through me. I'm not going to do anything for God. I'm not. But God, everything He wants to do in my life, He's going to do it through me. So I don't need to fix anything in myself before God can use me. I just need to submit. And it's, at first it's a little painful. <laughs> And then later, it's a little more painful. <laughs> Let me tell you the answer for depression. Actually, the answer for all this, all of our what ails us. There's one reason that this, all this is important. There's several reasons. 1 Peter 4.10 As each one has received a gift that administered to one another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now, I'm not talking about not necessarily talent or giftedness or eloquent speech or music or playing or singing. If you don't know what your gift is, I encourage you to, to, to start your journey to find it. Ask God what it is. Is it kindness? Is it holding the door? Is it greeting? Holding the door? My wife and I have been looking for churches and there's some we visited that we felt hated when we walked in. I'm serious. It was unbelievable. It's like, okay, we're sorry we came here. If in your clan. You know, serious. It's like, wow. So, maybe your gift is just to smile to make people feel loved or cared about. You don't know what they've been through that day or that weekend or that week. We don't know. Maybe some of your gift is uh, helping take up offering or, or serving. I know that you, uh, 
that you need people to this for 2018 to prepare the communion. There's your opp- here's an opportunity. If you don't know what your gift is, serve somewhere till you find it. <laughs> because this that will get your mind off yourself. My, and it helps me to get my mind off myself when I, when I walk in this. Because all my troubles are there, but they become so much smaller when I'm not thinking about them all the time. Here's why. To be a conduit of love. This is why, as a believer... We need to read our Bible. We need to renew our mind to what the Word says. Love. Love. And the Bible says that love, in Corinthians it says love, part of of what love does is not seek its own. It's not self-seeking. In fact, fact, James says where there's envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom from above is first pure, gentle, peaceful, Willing to yield, full of good fruits, full of mercy, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And if you live an isolated life, you don't have to make peace with anybody because you're isolated. These are relational things. Relational. So we get to this and we let God conform us to the image of His Son. And it is a process and it is a lifelong process. My mic is falling off. It's a lifelong process. I think I got it. That's close. I get it. Well, yeah, fix that for me. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. It's a lifelong process, and the Bible has a term for it. It's called sanctification, being made more like Jesus. More of Jesus, less of me. He must increase, I must decrease, as John said. And it's, it, if we can get past, here's the key, if we, or one of the keys, I say that about every point. If we can get past this, past looking at ourselves or being so self-focused that we can reach out and love to others, then there's going to be so much freedom you're going to find. I promise you. When all this started happening to me, my kids were just... It was unbelievable. People around me just could not believe what was going on. But I knew what was going on. I knew it was a miracle of God. And I knew it was God's work. He wants to take us out of the mud and mire of self-pity, of self-focus, and place us in His kingdom that has a job to do through His power and through His Spirit. And it's to be a conduit of love. The greatest expression of love is this. It's to participate in the cause of the gospel. And here's your example. God gave us an example. He's not asking anything of us that's not He hasn't showed. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. For God so loved. There's our example. Hmm. I'm going to close with this. Here's Isaiah 58, verse 6 through 10. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? Jesus is the bread of life, right? And that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out, And when you see the naked, that you cover him with prayer. When you see the godless, cover him with prayer. And not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. All that up there, God was saying, stop focusing on yourself. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke, this heavy thing, from your midst, the pointing of the finger, well, my mom, you know, emotionally abused me. And she did. God rest her soul. But take, God tell me, take away the pointing of the finger and the speaking wickedness and start to extend your own soul to the hungry. Reach out and satisfy the afflicted soul And then your light will shine in darkness and your darkness 
shall be as noonday. Whether that darkness be your depression, whether that darkness be as some kind of financial issues or some trouble in your life, love doesn't seek its own. The Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Jesus is the living water that fl flows up and through us and out of us. And I want to ask you this. I ask you to respond to this call. What God is calling in your heart. I know that I've said something today that that's touched your heart or, or pulled you, maybe even made you uncomfortable. But I ask you to respond to the call of God. Receive, if you're here and you're not born again, receive this free gift of pardon that God has given you. And let God teach you how to forgive others. To help us, Lord, to forgive. Acts chapter 2 says, Repent and be baptized. Don't forget the repent part. Which means just to turn away from the bad, the, the sin, the evil, the selfishness. And begin to live a life for Christ and for others. It's about kingdom work. And now, if you're here and you're already a Christian and you're a believer, here's my call to action for you. If Jesus is your Savior, it's a wonderful thing. But I'm asking you to submit to His Lordship and be obedient to the kingdom work which God is calling you. He'll, he'll take care of your issues and your trouble. He will. And whatever He allows, trust Him that He's allowed it to keep you in the straight and narrow, dependent on Him. Because at the end of the day, He's conforming us to Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us. You can find us on the web at cornerstonechatham.org.